Hey guys, my name's Ed Budd, and on my channel I typically review running shoes. I've been receiving lots and lots of questions about the Nike Alpha Fly. In particular, the use of the Air Zoom Pods to help answer some of those questions, specifically about the implementation of the Air Zoom Pods. I'm going to go through a history of the Nike Air Zoom technology. Before I get to that though, if you're into running shoe content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications so you'll be informed when new videos are launched. And smash that like button for me. Let's get to it. So, I was very lucky before the lockdown occurred to pick up a pair of the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent. They don't half smell good too. Oh yeah. It's like a vintage wine. A lot of controversy though has surrounded this shoe in terms of the use of the Air Zoom Pods here in the midfoot. This got me thinking as to when Zoom Air or Air Zoom, as it seems to switch around all the time, when it was first implemented. When did this technology first appear? What is the history of the Air Zoom technology? So the very first Air Zoom technology appeared back in 1995. It was originally called Tensile Air. So basically Nike were looking to try and minimize the amount of midsole to kind of lower the cushion, at least the profile of it. It was all geared up around a performance. They all wanted to improve performance, lower the weight, everything that we're still trying to look to do today. The Air Zoom LWP featured only a rear air unit. That was very quickly superseded though by the Nike Zoom Alpha. Hmm, I've heard that name before somewhere. Which had zoom air through the whole of the midsole unit. It was actually grouped into four sections in fact. I'll throw an image onto the screen so you can check that out. There were three in the heel and then one further in the midfoot. Moving through to 1997 next, a very popular shoe, even now, first appeared back then. That was the Nike Zoom Spiridon. This uses a Phylon midsole, as recently seen in the Nike Zoom Streak. That's kind of like a racing flat, really, that one. A very minimal profile midsole on the Zoom Streak. It's not a shoe you see an awful lot of, actually. I think I've only seen maybe one or two people in the local area using that shoe, mainly for 5Ks. The Air Zoom Spiridon used the same four pod configuration within the midsole to provide the cushion. That shoe turned out to be a real success for Nike, both in terms of sport and performance, but also from a casual perspective. It obviously had that reduced weight, but most importantly, a very new type of upper. It was one of the first to feature a mesh upper, which was a real innovation for the time. So that Spiridon progressed into another Nike model, the Talaria, which featured a new three-quarter length midsole air unit. They actually had a transparent bottom on that shoe, so you could actually see the air unit. Something of an innovation, Nike have always been keen to do that. If you go right back to the Jordan 5, for example, you could see that air unit. That was a real novelty thing to be able to see that. Something to show off to your buddies. You can actually see that zoom air unit here on the image, on screen, poking through the outsole. I think it's interesting to see there on the outer edge of the heel, they were continually using a larger piece of rubber there to protect that area where often a lot of runners are kind of making contact with that section of the outsole first. More iterations with bigger, larger and springier air units can be seen up to 1999. There's the Air Zoom Citizen and then the 2003 version of the Spiridon. That version actually had a Pibax cage around the heel air unit. That Pibax foam is also known as Zoom X. You'll know that Pibax is the same foam that features in the Zoom X shoes. So things like the Pegasus Turbo or the Vaporfly 4%, Next% Percent and Alphafly. It's often overlooked as well that Reebok have been using Pibax foam in some of their shoes recently too. So do go and check those out. Things are starting to look a bit more familiar now, aren't they, to the present day? Albeit the air units used in a slightly different place. Perhaps looks more of a casual shoe, the 2003 Spiridon, but there's certainly a massive wedge of that tensile air or air zoom unit in the heel area. In terms of running specific shoes in the use of air zoom or zoom air, the Pegasus line was the first to truly utilize that technology to assist runners. Way back in 82, the air wedge was the first Pegasus to utilize a heel air unit. So this brand new utilization of the air unit. It's really not all that brand new. 
Nike have had the technology for a long time. It's mainly the implementation. Back in 91, the Air Pegasus Racer appears to be the Pegasus Turbo of the time. This minimized weight there, down several ounces from the standard Pegasus model. So not much has changed there between 91 and 2020. In terms of gender equality, ridiculously, it took until 2004, yes, 2004, for the Pegasus line to be specifically adapted for women. I'm quite taken back by that. I'm amazed it took till then. Why so long? In 2006, it was specifically overhauled to become its own line, so there were both men's and women's versions of the shoes from then. I'm just still amazed it took till 2004. In 1997, Nike decided to drop the midfoot air unit out of the Pegasus, and then they even stopped the model for a couple of years, until 2000, when they reintroduced a full air unit within the midsole. 2007 now, they decided to split the bags up again, so there was two different bags, which increased the weight quite considerably. Basketball shoes and running shoes have often swapped technologies over the years, and you can certainly see some similarities between the use of Zoom Air between basketball shoes and running shoes. Back in 95, the Air Go LWP was one of the first basketball shoes to use that type of air. I think it's round about that point where Tensile Air became Zoom Air, or Air Zoom. I'm sorry I keep saying that, but it seems to, even Nike seemed to switch the two words around all the time. As I've gone back and looked through all the literature, it does seem to swap around all the time. One of the milestone uses of Air Zoom is in the Jordan 12. A full Air Zoom unit was utilized within the midsole of that shoe to provide incredible spring and rebound. If we now fast forward to 2019 and the LeBron 17, and also look at the Air Zoom Super Rep too, you'll begin to see some significant similarities between those shoes and the Alpha Fly. I think that LeBron 17 has got one of the highest midsole stack heights with Air Zoom in the midfoot, forefoot area and Air Max in the heel. Something sounds very familiar about all of that. Ah. So a bit of a dip into history there. You can see that the use of these Air Zoom pods here really isn't that crazy. People have been saying it's odd, and it's weird, that large heel volume, high stack height, lack of foam in the middle area of the midsole, and the overall area of the midsole and outsole. It's not all that odd, really. The technology's been there a long time. It's merely just the implementation of that technology. I think it's just change. It's progression. It's the same materials, the same technologies, but new ideas, new implementation. LeBron and Kipchoge using the same types of technology to reach their goals. I do find it interesting as well that when this shoe first appeared and surfaced online, there were a lot of YouTubers that said, I think that's one step too far. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go there. And some of them have. I think that's testament to how great the shoe is and the doors and opportunities that might be opened by using it. But that's just my opinion. I think everybody's got an opinion about this shoe. I certainly think it's fantastic. I will be taking this one up to 100 miles to give you my overall opinion on it. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video, guys. I really do appreciate it. And also, if you're a new subscriber, my heartfelt thanks goes to you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below as to where new videos are launched. Smash that like button, comment below with any of your observations, and make sure you share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.